Hey, welcome back to my channel. Have you been outside today? It is gorgeous outside. You need to get outside and get some fresh air. I got some things to tell you. Some stuff's went down. Are you ready? Things are afoot at the Circle K. <laughs> so, hey, how's it going? I'm glad you guys are back today. I hope you're doing well. I've been a little under the weather. I go to the doctor tomorrow about all that crap. You know how that work goes. Blood work and all that. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you was, there uh, was, night before last, there was these alien spaceships showed up in like three or four different states. I think one was like showed up in New Jersey, one in California and different places, you know. Anyway, I've got video footage for you and a little info about aliens and NASA and all that stuff. Plus, yesterday, now that was the day before yesterday, yesterday, um, Trump and uh, Putin and all them signed the seven-year peace treaty that it talks about in Revelations. It was officially signed yesterday. So that kicks off the clock, you know what I'm saying? That was a major thing that went down in history yesterday. Well, today is the Feast of Trumpets in Israel, like the... Uh, Rosh Hashanah thing. And I just think it's wild that those three things happened all in a row. I mean, you know, it's just odd that that happened. Y'all believe in aliens, do you? I don't know about all that alien stuff. I don't know. If there, uh, if there is aliens and they've been here a long time, I think it's kind of rude of them to hang around and not say nothing to us before now, don't you? Anyway, I'm going to let y'all check out my videos. I'll be back in a minute and we can talk about it, okay? They're here! They're here! Yo, look at that. Look at everybody in the highway right now. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Ni <laughs> idea. I mean, no se mueve de ahí. Set our lights. At this photo shoot. Wow. Look at this shit. Fuck is it? This is about the Pentagon. Oh, my God. 
identified flying object was detected by a flight crew. The incident has captured the attention of Chinese media, and theories about the UFO's identity are burning up on the internet as well. They include everything from a hidden U.S. bomber to an elaborate man-made hoax. For now, the UFO continues to be a mystery. A spokesman from China's Civil Aviation Administration confirmed to ABC News that the matter is under investigation. We need to accept that we are not alone in the universe. The federal government, all these years, has covered up everything. There have been visitation, crashed craft, material recovered. It was not anything from this earth. All I could do is keep a mouth shut. Declassified government documents confirm ongoing UFO incursions at nuclear weapons sites. These things are real. They're here. This is happening now. He rejected traditional interpretations of the Bible. Why, he wondered, would God appear to Moses on Mount Sinai in smoke and fire? Smoke, fire, trembling, loud noise, etc. So this was very shocking because my God would not believe, uh, not need some vehicle with smoke and fire, loud noise, etc. So this was all confusing my young head. Von Daniken began to theorize. What if Mount Sinai's smoke and fire was exhaust from an alien rocket, like in science fiction stories? What if Ezekiel's vision of a flying chariot with wheels within wheels was a spaceship? And in the book of Enoch, a text excluded from most versions of the Bible, the angels took Noah's great-grandfather for a ride in the sky. What if that ride was... I would suggest at least four times in the past our planet was visited by beings from, our, from outer space. Skeptics state that visitors from distant star systems would need to travel faster than light. But von Daniken has the answer. You don't need speed of light. You just construct a generation spaceship. So for the distance of 10 light years, maybe... 20, 25 generations in the spaceship. You imagine the spaceship like a, a big ocean liner. There are restaurants, there are TV, there are sports, whatever. So from this generation spaceship, smaller vehicles are let down to the planet. To Antarctica, that one of the first things they discovered was an entrance into a hollow earth civilization that was populated by very, very advanced beings. Admiral Byrd made a lot of unusual statements, including talking about what he called a new kind of craft that could fly from pole to pole. Is it possible that entrances to another world can be found at the Earth's poles? And if so, did Admiral Byrd actually pass through one of them? According to some ancient astronaut theorists, such gateways do exist, but rather than leading to inner Earth, they may be portals to another dimension. But whether an other Earth exists, what would its discovery mean for the future of humanity? Is an ancient story being told through geoglyphs that exist both on Earth and on our closest neighboring planet? And if so, what happened to those responsible for writing it? Perhaps civilization on Mars was destroyed. Or perhaps civilization began on Mars and then moved to Earth. Earth was in sense seeded by a Martian civilization and that is why we have similar structures on Mars and on planet Earth. So with the discovery of the face on Mars, is it possible that it's acting as a clue? It's telling us that somewhere here is evidence of a lost civilization that existed on the red planet perhaps millions of years ago. That's a very tantalizing possibility. On Monday, scientists announced that they have detected in the harshly acidic clouds of Venus 
a chemical called phosphine could point to this extraterrestrial aerial life. On Earth, phosphine is a flammable, foul, toxic gas produced by microbes that thrive in oxygen-free environments. Its odor is similar to decaying fish or garlic. He creates what is known as the Karnashev scale, a classification scheme ranking three levels of civilizations based on their ability to harness energy. A type one civilization has the energy of an entire planet. They might, for example, control the weather, earthquakes, volcanoes. They can modify them. They have the power of a planet. That's type one. A type two civilization has mastered the energy of a star. They've colonized the nearby planets, very similar to the Federation of Planets, like in Star Trek. Star Trek would be a type two civilization. Then there's type three. Galactic. They roam the galactic space lanes. They harness the power of black holes. That's like the empire of Star Wars. That would be a type three civilization. Now on this, now on this cosmic scale, what are we? Do we control the Earth? Do we control the stars? Do we control the galaxy? We are type zero. We get our energy from dead plants. Some scientists suggest that if humans were even to ascend to what Kardashev called a type one civilization, our current understanding of the laws of the universe would be dramatically altered. Now, some of my colleagues say, bah, humbug. The stars are so far away. Aliens can't possibly reach us, but that assumes that they're just type one. What happens if they are a thousand years ahead of us? Or for a type three civilization, a hundred thousand years more advanced than us? Then new laws of physics begin to open up and all the bah humbugs have to be thrown out the window because a new scale of physics emerges. Y'all know I received a letter in the mail uh, the other day, uh, and it was written on school paper, you know, notebook paper, with a pencil, and it said, uh, for people that are trying to spread light and hope that it could be difficult times right now, and they wanted to, uh, give me words of encouragement and, uh, to pray for me, and then they signed it at the bottom, you know, they included the prayer and everything. And they signed it at the bo bottom, Haley Ornsby. And I don't know this person, but they had a return address on the envelope. I mean, I thought it was pretty nice and sweet that somebody would do that. Somebody that I don't even know. So there is hope. There is kindness in the world, you know? Be kind to people, even if they don't deserve it. That's what we're supposed to do, ain't it? I know it's hard sometimes when you want to smack crap out of them, ain't it? <laughs> anyway, um, reach out to somebody you think might need, you know, a little lifting every now and then. Everybody goes, everybody has problems. Everybody does, and if I say they don't go on, Anyway, like I said, I hope y'all's day is doing good. It makes you wonder about all them aliens, though. You know what I mean? Is that just, is that gonna be part of the distraction in the end? And they got a thing now, it's called a Project Blue Beam. That's supposed to be some kind of space thing that the Trump administration and all them's working on. I don't know about all that stuff, but. It all has to do with space. They also said they, they found life on Venus, where life ha could survive on Venus. People need to leave stuff alone, I think, don't you? They need to quit sticking their nose anymore, it don't belong. That could cause, that could be a good thing or it could cause problems. You know? Anyway, it's so pretty outside today. Oh yeah, yesterday too, another thing that was weird that just blowed my mind. I was coming home, I looked up, 
and the sun, you could look directly at the sun and it not hurt you or nothing and it was red looking. It just looked like a planet, like a, you know, which I know it's a planet, but you know what I mean. You could look right at it. There was no light coming from it, but it was red looking. And uh, I asked people on Facebook if I was the only one saying that. And uh, some friends of mine told me it was from the smoke that from California, up with all the fires they've had, the smoke went up into the uh, ozone or whatever, blocking out the sun rays is what they said. But it still flipped me out. I was like, that ain't, that's not normal, that's weird. I always notice things that's weird around me. It pays to do that, right? Anyway, check us out. I'll be right back. This afternoon to change the course of history after decades of division and conflict this day is a pivot of history it heralds a new dawn of peace for thousands of years the Jewish people have prayed for peace for decades the Jewish state has prayed for peace today we already we are already witnessing a change in the heart of the Middle East a change that will send hope around the world. Mr. President, your statesmanship and tireless efforts have brought us here today and made peace a reality. When they say peace and safety. Then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But th let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. When they say peace and safety, this world will do everything it can to bring about peace, to bring about safety. Tropical Storm Sally has now been changed to a Category 1 hurricane. What does this mean? This means that destruction, terror, and loss of homes is going to happen. It is estimated that 30 inches of rain will fall, 80 mile per hour winds. Alabama has been hit extremely hard already. Their governor has urged people to leave if they still can. Florida has already had reports of flooding. In fact, some of the people who have yet to leave found that their cars have been buried in sand on the beachfront homes. Dolphin Island was flooded with high tide, not even the hurricane yet. Please pray for our East. Land file and um, already hit Alabama, Louisiana around in our... I mean, uh, well, we got to keep those people in our prayers, you know, because they're going to lose everything underwater a lot of their stuff's already underwater and it ain't even got there yet so it's gonna be bad um i wanted to apologize for my appearance i know i look like old hag but uh one of the reasons i'm going doctor is i keep losing weight and i don't know why and uh which i have a lot of stomach issues where i had that hernia mesh surgery Oh, sometimes it's so painful, man. Y'all just don't know. And you still have to function in your daily life. That makes it even harder, right? But hopefully my doctor will get me all squared away and get back to normal. 
Y'all pray for me if you don't mind. Anyway, I'm gonna get off here. I just wanted to pop on here and let y'all know what I've found that's went down so far. But uh, keep your eye on the news. And uh, everything, just check in on it. I mean, don't dwell on the news because it can bring you down. Try to look for everything positive and be happy in your life if you can. You never know how long we got on this earth, you know. Aliens might come and blow us off the map. I'm just kidding. But I hope you have a wonderful evening. And please know I love you. And pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Peace, baby.